in how we shape the agenda of this country to make it focus better on the national interest, better service delivery. And as I keep saying, the president, I said, will be using the parish model. To what extent does it work in our favor? And when I say in our favor, I mean in favor of the people who sent us here. The leader of the opposition, I thank you for inviting me. You have this bad habit of giving me really short notice. And sometimes I find it conflicting with my other programs. But respecting you, I always bend my program. But it should not become a habit. Because next time I'm going to refuse. He only told me yesterday in the afternoon. How kind is that? <laughs> the leaders of the parties here, I see all the big people here. I even see Honorable Bill Bill of UPC. I see all the leaders of the political parties that are represented in parliament. I think if you look at the arrangement of flags there, it starts with Uganda. And that is significant, it's symbolic, starts with Uganda. And Uganda means its peoples, and that's our focus as a parliament. The subsequent lining up of the flags is secondary. It's not first. It follows from the flag of Uganda, not any other flag. That means we have a duty and an obligation our country and our people. I see the Lord Mayor. I am trying to memorize a word that he has created that has become so popular. Mujoga. Don Romulukwago is so fond of these quips. Huh? I'm not talking about the other ones, uh, which make people laugh sometimes when they are held badly. <laughs> Honorable members, let's keep our eyes on the ball. And what is the ball? Is this country and its peoples. The ball is not the regime. A focus on the regime is a narrow focus, it's a wrong focus. The focus must be on the country and the people. Regime change is different from country destruction. Those two are very different. Regime and country are different. Let's focus on country. The Confucius give us the avenue of regime change. Every five years, we try and fail, we try and fail. And the only reason you are in the opposition is because at the time of elections, you didn't have the numbers. So you spend the next five years slowly, strategically, building those numbers that you have never had in the last elections. And you cannot build these numbers by chaos. You build these numbers by using your power of persuasion. Not the position of power. It's a duty. It's a strategic obligation of the opposition to make sure this happens. Build the numbers project. You have five years, a month, another month, building numbers, building numbers slowly. When the next time the elections come, we have no challenge. I had a conversation with the uh, writer and writer of Mudinga in 2001 at Saba Saba Hotel in Arusha. We sat with him, was with his brother Guru. At that time, we had just joined the Kano of Moi. And all of you remember that Moi had imprisoned him for the seven years. I asked him, what madness is it? Did you have to join Kanu? He kept quiet. He 
and he says, Kijana, the only reason you stay in your position is because you never had the numbers when the elections were called. And then he paused. And then he said, When I am through with Kano, you will see. True to his words, three months later, this was November, I think. Three months later, around February, March, Raila walked out of Kano with almost everybody, out of Kano with almost everybody, and formed a party that eventually caused change in Kenya. That should be your focus. Do not behave as if the opposition is your place. Behave as if you are a government in waiting. A government in waiting, I experienced in South Sudan when I used to do things there. During the war, they destroyed all the railways. During the war, they destroyed all the factories. When they came to government, they didn't have railways, they didn't have factories. And then one of the leaders said, eh, why did we do this? You need this infrastructure? You need this thing that are already in place? Because, as I said earlier, regime change is not about destruction. The fundamentals of change of regime are in the Constitution. If we follow them, we cause change, peaceful change. It's like this building. There's this room. We can choose to have the front here, or there, or there. We can choose to collapse the walls, because they are collapsing them. But when we begin to attack the pillars and the columns of these buildings, we have exceeded. What we should be doing. So let's remove the curtains, change the colors of the curtains change the podium, turn the tide to go the other side. But let's not tamper with real foundation and structural arrangement of this building. <coughs> and that is the constitution in our country. We should focus on this. Keep our eyes on the ball. There's a prayer that we pray in parliament every day without actually understanding the extent to which the indictment is, the charge is, the conviction is. This prayer convicts us as parliamentarians. Let me read it for you. You only always listen in a sober mood because you are humbling yourself, or at least pretending to, <laughs> to bring God in your presence. The last paragraph of this prayer, let your blessings descend upon them here assembled, and grant that they may, as in your presence, treat and consider all matters that shall come under their deliberation in so just and faithful a manner as to promote your honor and glory and to advance the good of those whose interests you have committed to their charge. That's your prayer. Every day you enter that house, you pray that prayer. Does it have meaning to you? Those people whose interests have been to commit our charge is our true magnetic north. Shake the compass the way you want. Let it settle. The needle will go back to the north. True magnetic. Shake the parliament the way you want, but once it's settled, let our focus go back to your people. That's the only way. When we are done and time has passed, they'll say, There came a group of leaders appointed by God for us and for our purposes, and we have truly seen three leaders. Let's not lose focus on 